Hey, welcome back, everybody. Tonight, we're going to jump into something a little bit different, but still super relevant from a security perspective, especially if you're on the management side of things. Uh, we're going to talk about KPIs, and specifically, we're going to talk about how to select KPIs that are useful from a managerial perspective. Um, I think oftentimes people fall into a couple of different traps when we start talking about performance indicators. Uh, engineers often fall into this uh, idea that they're not very helpful. They're there to sort of micromanage and judge performance and things like that in a critical way uh, and not really there to help people achieve goals, which is really their intent. And from a managerial perspective, you almost feel obligated to report on specific KPIs. And frequently, I find that especially newer managers don't really know why those numbers are what they're being asked for. They don't know how to leverage KPIs to help them make decisions, how to drive change. And ultimately, KPIs should be functional and useful tools. Uh, not just something that you're sort of obligated to report on every month to somebody higher than you in the company, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about the GQM method, which is how I uh, like set, picking KPIs and setting them. I think it's a very useful and um, to the point way of getting to numbers that will actually help you. Uh, so let's kind of dive in. All right. So first, you know, let's recap. What is a KPI? Um, Simply put, like we can argue over the idea of what a KPI is versus an OKR or a billion other different acronyms for different numbers we use in a business. But for this conversation, for me, I'm a pretty practical person. A key performance indicator is a number that we use to represent something important to us. It's, it's that simple, right? Um, there's three different kinds fundamentally, right? There's leading indicators. So these are things that we can kind of see coming up and help us plan and make decisions. Um, a good example of that might be the number of vulnerable systems in your environment is a leading indicator for how likely you might be to be compromised, right? You can look at one number and sort of predict a future outcome as a result. Um, another common leading indicator might be like a sales funnel. How many leads do you have in that funnel? How many you know meetings did your sales team have? Those might be representative of or should be representative of the number of deals that have closed by the end of the quarter. Um, there's also lagging indicators. Um, I think these are the ones that people put a lot more emphasis on, even though they're the least useful for productive action right now. But lagging indicators are things that have already happened, right? If we're looking at the number of alarms that have occurred to our SOC, cool, we had a thousand alarms last quarter or a million alarms last quarter. Whatever it is, it's what happened. You can't really change that number anymore. So it's an indicator of what has occurred in the past. Um, they're helpful. You need to understand those things, especially if you're looking at, say, a lagging indicator of a previous quarter might help you understand where you are for the year. Uh, but ultimately, the, what's done is done. A lagging indicator is a number that's set, and you're just waiting for the next measurement interval. Other kind of uh, similar lagging indicators in business might be something like EBITDA or uh, gross margin or things like that. Still very important numbers, but they're lagging indicators of something that's already happened. And then we have things like real-time uh, indicators. And really, these are things like that are in the moment. They're happening right now. You can make decisions based on this stuff, but ultimately, they're things that have already sort of occurred. Um, a common one, total number of alarms open currently. All right. So what's the GQM method? Uh, the GQM method is a multi-tiered approach to selecting indicators that will actually help you make decisions and drive outcomes fundamentally. Um, it's GQM stands for goal question metric. So the idea with the GQM method is that by understanding what your goals are, you should be able to ask questions to help you understand where you are in making it to that goal or being successful in that goal. And your metric or your indicator is ultimately the answer to those questions. So if we think about KPIs fundamentally, they're there to drive an outcome that we're expecting if we're picking good KPIs. And if they're there to drive an outcome, the goal is really that outcome. So the goal is what are you trying to achieve? The questions are what can you ask to know how close to success you are? And the metric is the answer to that question in a number of forms so you can track it fairly easily in a dashboard or a report or something like that. Now, this is really important because if you don't know what your goal is or the purpose of a KPI, it's not super useful, right? And if we kind of kind of go through this a little bit, we'll start at like the top level, the goal, right? It's what are you trying to achieve? What problems are you encountering that you're trying to kind of work your way through? What improvements need to happen to the business? Like you have to ask yourself these questions to establish these goals. And it's important to understand that KPIs should not be a forever thing usually, especially as a, if you're a more tactical manager, right? Like these should change the closer you are to the to your engineering team. If you're the president of the company, sure, you might continue to focus on EBITDA and gross margin forever, and you should probably. 
Uh, but if you're a tactical like line manager or um, you know somebody who is still direct reports to the engineers on the team, you need something that's going to change a bit more often because your goals should change pretty regularly. Um, that way you're continuously improving, right? And with that, your KPIs will change. So don't fall in love with any KPIs. Don't get used to reporting the same thing forever. Um, they'll get stale quickly. If you're hitting your goals, people will stop paying attention to them. So understand that as your goals shift, you're going to change your KPIs along with them. That way you continue to improve. Um, a good question like that we hear often is we want to make sure a customer is happy. Or from a security standpoint, we want to make sure a customer is secure. That's a goal, right? It's not a smart goal, but it's a goal. So it's a place to start. Next up, we kind of crack into what are the questions we can ask, right? Um, what information do you need to know if you're, or what do you need to know to see if you're on your way, on the right track to meeting that goal, right? How will the information you get from that question drive your decision making? Um, what does good even look like in the context of that question, right? Like if your goal is to say, reduce your alarm count by 500, what kind of questions would you need to ask to know how close you are to hitting that goal? Um, Often you're going to have to ask multiple questions, right? It's rare that you have one question that'll just answer it. So it's okay to have multiple questions and thus multiple metrics to track a singular goal. Um, example, you know, we want a customer happy. Customers are happy when we respond to things quickly. So are we meeting our SLA is a pretty good and common goal. Uh, in the security realm, are our customers secure? Customers are more secure when we're responding to alarms quicker because they are. Um, so are we meeting our SLA for emergency response in the SOC, right? When something comes in and we think it's ransomware, are we getting to that system? Are we able to isolate? Are we able to start incident response quickly and efficiently? That's going to lead to a more secure customer long term versus are we taking hours and hours to get to that stuff? Does the bad guy have time to you know, start really getting a persistent hold before we even respond to things? So that's what I mean by questions. Like if your goal ultimately is a happy customer, or a secure customer, how do you, like what what drives that? What what outcomes need to occur for the, that goal to be achieved? All right, and then ultimately you get to the metric of it. Um, what can you measure specifically to answer your question that helps you understand if you are on or off track to your goal? Um, a good place to kind of start that is you know what data sources are available. You know how reliable are they? Um, do you need more than one metric to get the answer? And often the answer to that is yes. Uh, you know, so in this case, what is our average response time? What is our average resolution time? How quickly are we, you know, resolving security problems or any problems on the network or in the environment? Um, and a lot of times people fall into the trap of starting with the metric, right? So they say, hey, what kind of metrics can I use to measure my team? And they might even go ask their peers. Like we hear this all the time in some of our peer groups. We hear it all the time in uh, forums online, if you jump on Reddit, I mean, people always ask this. They're like, hey, what KPIs do you guys use to measure your team? And my answer is pretty much always, like, I can tell you what KPIs I use, but I'm in a different place than you are probably from a maturity level, from a continuous improvement level. It's not that I'm better. I'm just measuring something different currently, right? My team might be fine on response time for emergencies. So I've moved on to now I want to crank up my response time for lows or I want to uh, get to, hey, I just want to reduce the number of a of noise on the network, right? I want to get fewer false positives, you know, uh, or, hey, I don't think I have good enough coverage. So my goals might be around getting better visibility into more areas of a network. It's going to rotate. So what I'm measuring right now as a manager may or may not help you. Uh, I'd rather teach this method than hand you a bunch of KPIs on a dashboard that force you to measure what I care about right now versus what you should care about right now. Um, but understanding what metrics are there, don't fall into the trap of, well, like, what's my data source? Ask the question first and then figure out where to get the data. Don't limit your, your, your ideas by putting constraints on, like, what data do I have available? You know, if the goal is important, figure out a way to collect the data and, and you'll get there. All right, so some KPI best practices. I think these are really important to keep in mind, even when you're using the GQM method, right? Uh, there's still some things you have to keep in mind. Um, Keep it simple. Like a lot of times people just want these huge fancy dashboards with lots of data um, that rarely ends up super successfully. You end up with a whole bunch of data that maybe you don't know what to do with. Uh, and that's why that point is kind of if you don't have an action plan for a KPI, then it's not really helping you. Right. If you see a number up on a dashboard and it's a billion or it's five and you don't really change any behavior or do anything, just delete it. It's pointless. Right. It doesn't matter. Um, generally speaking, quality over quantity. 
Uh, you probably can't action more than three to five major movements in your team at a time, right? Like in any given quarter, we might pick three to five goals to focus on as an organization. Anything more than that, you run out of time to do your whole full-time job. Uh, fewer than that, eh, you're probably going to go slower than you want. So three to five KPIs that align with a couple of really good goals is really much, much, much better than 20 arbitrary KPIs just to fill up a dashboard. Um, Start with high level stuff. This is another one where people are like, hey, I want to drill into this very specific measurable. It's like, why? Why do you think that's your problem? Start with high level. Start with your core processes. Measure fundamentals and make sure those are the areas that are actually failing. Um, look at your processes as a whole and find good places to measure points of those core processes and figure out if that's what will actually move you forward, right? Use scorecards to track things over time. Just don't look at snapshots in the moment. You want to be able to see trends in your data, right? You want to see, are you trending in the correct direction? Not just where are you in the moment in time? And make sure you're using a blend of those leading, lagging, and real-time indicators. Um, they all have pros and cons, and you want all of them generally, kind of depending on what you're aiming for. But you generally need a mix of the three to make things useful. And make sure that you're using KPIs on multiple sides of a process to th keep things in context, right? Um, in managed services and managed security services, we talk a lot about utilization rate. And this is one of my favorites because, you know, somebody will be like, yeah, my engineer has a 90% utilization rate. And that sounds cool. You're like, that guy's a badass, right? But what if he's only clocking two hours a day? You're still going to go broke because you're only getting two hours a day out of the guy. And 90% of two hours is not enough to pay a full-time engineer and stay in business. So you have to understand that a KPI in isolation and without context isn't good enough. It needs to be 90% utilization, but also clocking, you know, 40 hours a week or whatever your metric is. So you have to make sure you're looking at comparable KPIs. And they usually, if they're on the opposite sides of a measurement, they give you enough context, uh, context to make good decisions without having to you know, remember the intricacies of a KPI or dive deep into what it is. You want these things to be, you know, fluid and, and useful on the fly. So you can look at them quickly and say, okay, we have a problem and go do something about it versus, hmm, I wonder what's going on. You have to spend your day kind of diving into what that number actually means and, and all that jazz. Um, well, that's the GQM method for KPIs. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Um, you know, sit down. We're almost at the end of the year. So it's a great time to start developing new scorecards for your coming year. Uh, talk with your team, figure out your goals, and use this to drive some good metrics to help everybody stay on track and hit those goals. Uh, have a good night, everybody.